And now it's time for our overlooked, nostalgic DVD of the week. And uh, having just come off of Rise of the Guardians, um, it strangely reminded me of another film that I had kind of forgotten about. Um, so it's nostalgic in that sense. It's not that old, but it's forgotten. And my pick of the week is Bolt. Um, well, obviously that would tie into Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I would love to hear you explain that. I'm going to tell you why, wise ass. Um, my ass is wise. Don't doubt the wiseness of my ass. It's the only part of you that is wise. You're a dick. At least I'm not an ass. Anyway, the... I'm sorry. It's okay. My dick is wise, too. <laughs> Review the movie, Dan. Are you finished? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Similar setups with a main character who's trying to find his place in the world, but it came more from the animation. It was another film that was done in 3D at the time, um, and the action was very similar, and the animation in some senses is very similar. And what I mean by that is both these films knew how to capture motion. Which sounds silly, it's animation, how can you not know how to capture motion? It's really easy not to do. To actually animate a film and get a true sense of motion, you're flying through space, you're on a roller coaster ride, you're in a helicopter, is very difficult, and both these films really nailed it. But on top of that, the other thing I really like is, it's a good story. And like Rise of the Guardians, it's good, not great. And I know that sounds like I'm downplaying the movie, but something you have to keep in mind is much like, I th well, I think animated films are better nowadays, generally speaking, but occasionally you get these sort of ruts, and Disney at that time, not really making good movies. With, with the exception of Pixar, but their CG department was definitely pretty With the exception insane. of Pixar, which then they would dump, then they went back, then they... Yeah, so, this was in the process when they, I think they were getting rid of them. Yeah, that so... That was a smart move. This was at a time when, when what was the one, like, Home on the Range? I mean, these were the sort of films that were coming out. And, and Meet the Robinsons! Exactly. This sort of film came out at a time when Disney was not making good movies, and it was a solidly good movie. It's not Toy Story 2 or 3, it's not a Miyazaki film, but the film stars John Travolta, of all people, as a dog, a trained dog, who basically is the co-star on a sort of teen kids spy show. A show that looks very similar to what Disney would air, actually. Though, actually, that was one of, the brilliant, one of the brilliant things about the film is you know the people who made this movie had watched the Disney Channel and was like, you know, we should just totally kind of make fun of these things. <laughs> so they created this character, uh, Penny, and they created this show that she's in, and she forms a relationship, you know, with the, the stunt dog, the only issue is the stunt dog doesn't realize that he's in a TV show. He's taking all of this literally. So it has, much like Rise of the Guardians borrowed elements, this has elements of, I would say, like, um, the Three Amigos, where they're not quite aware initially, or Galaxy Quest, where you have this, this group of people who's not aware of the joke. Um, so, long story short, the dog gets separated. And after that, has to find his way back. Well... He keeps thinking he has to go save Penny, who is in no real danger because she's just a child actress and this is all imaginary. Along the way on this road trip movie, he hooks up with a cat that's been abandoned. And then, much like Rise of the Guardians, which is one of those stories about faith and having faith in people and faith in others, you know, it's about Bolt trying to teach the cat, you know, to have faith in people even though she was abandoned. And then... I love hearing you talk so see Bolt is trying to teach the cat about how there the cat There are things bad. happening in these movies. That's the problem. People think kids' films can't have anything real going on. That's I, bullshit. I, I agree. I agree. Bullshit. No, I totally agree. It's and just I funny like, to hear. No, I like movies like this because they're trying to tell a story. This isn't freaking baby geniuses. These people put real work into this and you shut up. I think it's a good movie. It just sounds funny hearing you talk so seriously about the cat looting of this. Anyway, at the very end, there's a big roller coaster chase and Miley Cyrus sings a song. You know, when I saw the trailer, I got more excited when I saw the trailer because I did really like the concept for it. Actually, uh, much much like Rise of the Guardians, I thought it was going to suck from the trailer. I, they don't I know actually, how to market these films. I, I, right. I really like the trailer, and actually, I think I got my hopes a little higher than what the film delivered because what I found is that the film was very sweet, wasn't as funny as I thought, 
But here's the other thing. I think audiences are opening up to this, too. That's not necessarily bad. A, a film I can be, be very genuine. I funny if you give character. Yeah, and, and this had... That's and why I, a film like Wreck-It Ralph works. Wreck-It Ralph is actually not that funny of a movie when you get down to it. When you get the down characters to, and the world. Look at Aladdin so. and Shrek and you got a thousand jokes, but really Wreck-It Ralph had more character than both those movies put together, so... I And I think Travolta as, as the dog actually was a great choice, and he did sound he was very genuine. He was incredible. He was incredibly genuine... Whatever Cyrus XYZ was in that movie, she was great. I forgot who played the cat. Do you remember? I just know she's from Kirby Enthusiasm. Uh, I forget uh, her name. She was excellent. The Sorry, hamster. Actress. <laughs> <laughs> the hamster in some parts of the film do feel padded. So that is the one reason why I don't think this film got as much recognition as it deserved. Because becoming a road movie, it does kind of meander a bit. But I think the strong moments in it are really strong. It, it touches on three things. You've got abandonment with the cat... Um, in the case of the dog, it brought up a very interesting thing, which is, I've always wondered if, like, stuck dogs and dogs in a film are kind of messed up a bit, because they're always surrounded by eight billion different there people. Is. Jump! Do this! And I wonder if the dog's kind of like, ah. that, that, I think that's the saddest part to me in the whole movie is actually in the beginning when, uh, when shooting is done, but the dog is still ready to pounce. Like, he just wants to make sure oh, nothing has this. So and he's just sad. looking at the door. And even when she wants to play, he looks like he does want to play. But no, he has to protect. He has to protect. And I thought that was a very tragic, The dog has a moment. complex. Yeah. yeah. And, the dog's and, always ready to act. And there's... And it's something that I think they touched upon, in, which is another thing. Like, all three of the characters had something to him. And that's something that, even though she was... Somewhat perfunctory to the story, which is only their beginning and end. There's something about the child actor's character, it was a similar deal. When you look at how that movie ends, it's a rejection of the Hollywood system and that these people are just dancing monkeys here to perform. And that was the case with both well, her and, and the Well, and she kind of feels bad, you know, the, because it's poor much been abused. Too. Yeah, it's yeah. a strangely dark film if you really want to look at it that way. Um, but, you know, my. It's got some great lines, too. I think my favorite is because he takes everything so seriously. The, the cat, very much, it's lifting from Toy Story. You know, you are a stunt dog. You know, what are you talking about? And he's like, you know, I, I have to save her. And the cat's just like, you're out of your mind. And he's just like, of course you would think that because I'm a dog and you're a cat. You're all just degenerate creatures of darkness. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's a good way to describe cats. <laughs> I, I love that. cats, but they are, they can be evil little bastards. I thought that was a fantastic line, but it fits within this worldview, because I think there's like a Dr. Claw-like character mm -hmm. with an evil cat. But no, and I think that the funniest scene on a personal level for me is the scene where Bolt hears the girl calling out like, Bolt, help! Bolt, help! Bolt, help! Again and again and again, and he runs in, and it turns out it's the editor editing the film together, just replaying yeah, the same scene. it is pretty fucking cruel the more I think about it, actually. No, it's but like the, just how obsessed he is and how worried he is and what they do any, to this uh, character. Well, not only that, but anybody who has ever edited in their life, and you, like, I turned to you and I was like, this film nailed it. The editor's just sitting there, just click, click, munching his Doritos, click, click, Bolt, help, Bolt, help, and he just keeps clicking this scene again and again, looking for the right exact second to cut or going through alternate takes, that, living with you for a while, that was yeah. it. Like, I just I just remember looking at you, she's like, my God, that's just your life. <laughs> Except they cut out the scene where his... Except they cut out the hours and hours yeah. of it. Well, no, and they cut it. out the scene where the editor's version of Adobe Premiere crashes, and then he punches a hole through the wall. <laughs> Not that you would know. That, that was a good deleted that. scene. I, I, I wish they kept that in. <laughs> but yeah, oh, overall, it's a really good film. Um, it's very funny. Uh, it's got a lot of heart. It's got a lot of character. And it's got a good story. And it reminded me of Rise of the Guardians as a good film, not a great one, but one that, much like Rise of the Guardians, I'm predicting may be overlooked in the future. I hope it isn't, but... You know, I think it's gotten overlooked. I think it deserves a shot, so. It, it is a decent film, and it is a lot of fun. So, it is on DVD. Go check it out. Oh, and one last thing. A great use of 3D. So, it was one of the first films I had seen in a while where I'm like, okay, the 3D here actually worked. So. Which you cannot enjoy now because there are no 3D glasses for it, so. Sorry. Sorry. They, they have 3D televisions. But they suck. Okay. They, they do suck. Don't get a 3D television. Just. Why would you do that? Some people like 3D. Some people actually like watching their money spontaneously combust. <laughs>